I knew that it was my back. Next day, Doc said, we need you here in LA. My back is in so much pain that I'm gonna have to have surgery. By the time I got to LA, my leg was done. Ten seconds to go in the half. Working against Howard, got the switch. Good defense by Howard moving his feet and gets the block. Dwight Howard comes up with a big defensive play and uh, you know what, he might be hurting a little bit. Howard getting up slowly. And remember, he set up those two games with a bad back the top of the news tonight that Dwight Howard's going to have surgery on his injured back tomorrow. The Magic Center will miss the rest of the season and the playoffs. Welcome back to SB Nation. Talking about Dwight Howard's season-ending back surgery, it seems painful. You know, back injury is, is a serious deal. If you're saying he's faking injury, just stop. This is the first big injury Dwight has ever had. He's been pretty healthy all this time. Yeah, well, he's been one of the most durable NBA centers in NBA history, missing only seven games in his first seven years in the league. I just cried and just like, why? Why this had to happen after all the stuff I went through for the whole season? I was trying to find every way possible to not have to have surgery. What about my teammates? I was really thinking that the playoffs would come and then we'll just turn it all around. I witnessed news at noon that Dwight has agreed to stay through the end of his contract. You know, loyalty is, is better than you know anything else. He said it came down to loyalty, loyalty to a team in a city that took a chance on an 18-year-old high school kid eight years ago. You know, we had an opportunity to win. You know, I tried to play through the pain for a while. Then it seemed like it went from bad to worse. You know, I couldn't be there for my team. I couldn't even travel. I had put so much work in to be at the top of my game and get my team to the top. So, so we made a little appearance back yeah, at. Yeah, we back here at the hospital where I have my surgery on my back. This is my room, 436. Shh. Come on in. This is where I was at when I was in, right after surgery. Sitting right here in this bed. I have a little bathroom here. I was sitting, I ain't gonna get in the bed, that's bad luck. I was in the bed like this, you know what I'm saying? Stuff on my other arms, all of that. Anyway, let's go. I've been in LA for about seven and a half weeks. You're not gonna get me, you almost, I almost look up. <laughs> I haven't done that much, but walk around the hotel, uh, play my video games, play, do my Legos, and uh, just relax and um, get away from everything else. This is my chair. You know, I've had it since the uh, first day I got uh, to the hotel. Uh, it's probably the only chair that I've been comfortable in. You know, since I've been since I've been here for the last six, seven weeks. Rehab has really been therapy. Uh, trying to trying to get his strength back in his leg. I mean, he went from barely being able to bend over and barely being able to do a calf raise to you see now. Doctor said BLT, which is no bending, lifting, or twisting. So uh, I can't lift anything over 10 pounds, really, not supposed to. 
And we're finally seeing that, that strength come back in his leg to where he can do a calf raise, so that's really good. It's crazy that we're excited about Superman, you know, doing a calf raise. got a new hobby now, which is my little Legos. Uh, and I started doing this you know, a little bit over a week, week and a half ago. And uh, just really just keeps my mind off a lot of stuff that's been going on, you know, around me. We're in LA now for seven weeks. The other games that I can play. In a hotel, you know, just that alone lets you know how serious and how dedicated he is to his rehab and his recovery. One of my rehab tools right here. I have to use this, you know, when I'm rehabbing. You know, it helps with the core of my back and the strength of my back. So A lot of people, when they get to that level, they kind of get complacent and lazy. Basically, this is it. This is my room. Uh, this is what I do. Dwight is uh, it's pretty serious. You know, he doesn't smoke. He doesn't drink. He doesn't really hang out. I stand out here sometimes uh, when nobody's here. And uh, I just look around the city, just think about life. In the last seven weeks, um, Dwight has shown great improvement. He's, you know, walking, you know, around the block about three, four times a day. What up, son? What's up, boss man? Oh, congratulations makes me tired, but you know, he loves to do it because you know, it's the only time he can really get out and about. I miss being at home, you know, in Orlando, going to the movies, uh, going to games. Uh, just, I just miss the atmosphere of being at the game, talking to fans and just having a good time. Good luck. Thank you. After that first block, we just come here and we walk this way and walk back to the hotel. You know, I just been here, walking around every day. And I felt like for the first couple of weeks I was in jail. He gonna kill himself. Oh! So my walks is like recreation, my outside time. Yo, this is a little spot when we come. Hey, don't act like you don't know us. He's just a big, a, a big kid. He loves to have fun. It's, he's never, like, I never see him down. That's why when he was hurt, you could see the change. And that just let me know that this boy was hurt. Tonight, Superman stays put in Orlando. I'm not like those, those guys that are people that they're trying to pay me to be. I'm loyal. Dwight Howard will play for the Magic a little longer. I just love this city too much. But there's one catch. I want to win a championship. We broke the story on Eyewitness News at noon that Dwight has agreed to stay through the end of his contract. And since then, we've learned it will give the Magic two more chances to win a championship with Howard. Channel 9's Christian Brewery has been on the front lines of this roller coaster for months now. Dwight Howard made it official today that he will finish out this season with Orlando and by waiving his early termination option, will be in a Magic uniform through next season as well. Howard called it an extremely difficult decision. You know, I've gone back and forth and you know, it's, it's not as easy as what people think. You know, you're talking about a career changing event. We all have to really understand that we have an opportunity to to win a championship. And everybody has to believe. And that's what I've told Otis and Alex, my teammates, and even our city. You know, everybody has to have that same belief. Howard will be back on the court in a Magic uniform tomorrow night at the Amway Center. Well, you know, I knew that it was my back. I remember the practice, um, everything. I remember going up for a dunk, and one of my teammates just doing what people do every day, try to foul me so I wouldn't dunk. 
And as I'm going up, he's coming down, and uh, my back, I just felt something kind of snap, and I was like, oh, man. So I'm thinking it was going to go away, but it got worse. So at first, he was like, man, I'm going to have to miss some games, you know, uh, but let's get this training going. Let's get this rehab together so that I'm back and I can help my team finish this season and bring home the championship. Just like why you know I was just so hurt because you know I looked at my team and you know I said we got a we got a chance this year to win I don't know about any other year I don't care about the future whatever I, I feel like at that moment you know we had an opportunity to win right, what happened, man? Let's go out here and play as hard as we can and we mess up and still lose and get it hard I tried to play through the pain for a while I work one two three in the neighborhood and Dwight Howard will go get it. I've never cried any kind of pain my whole life. I broke my leg, cracked my sternum. I played a whole year with a cracked sternum. Uh, I've had some, some major injuries and I've never, I never cried. Uh, there was actually a game to where I was literally in tears. We knew before he left that, that his back was a little, you know, sore. We just didn't know what it was. I begged him, you know, please, you know, just take a game. But Dwight wants to play. Dwight's a competitor. Darkness at my door. Knock, knock on Friday. Working against Howard, got the switch. Good defense by Howard moving his feet and gets the block. And in transition, defiant Dwight Howard comes up with a big defensive play and a... His size to stay in front of Andre Iguodala it allowed everybody to stay attached to the shooters. Very good defense. But as he got up, he did hold that back. Not moving as well as you would expect. And remember, he set up those two games with a bad back. At halftime, I was in the locker room, and you know, tears just coming out of my eyes. And guys were like, what's wrong? And I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with me. But you know, after the game, I was like, man, I'm hurt. I'm hurting. I never felt that kind of pain before. I didn't understand it, I didn't want to understand it, but it was happening, you know, and it was, it was, we all, we all was, we all felt the injury, you know, because we couldn't just believe that he was hurt, you know, but he was hurt, he was really hurt. He had just finished that Philly game where, you know, you could tell just watching him, you know, that he was going through pain. He decided he would sit a game out and, and I knew it was, I knew it was hurting him when he agreed to sit out. And then, of course, they did the MRI after he missed that game. Waited a couple of days, and the first MRI I had, the area was this small. Then the next one, it was like that, so it had actually grown. After we realized it was a serious injury, we started looking around for the best doctors, and not just the best doctor, but the best back doctor and uh, Dwight's agent mentioned Dr. Watkins 
uh, to us and then we started researching him and we saw all the people who he's done surgeries on and back surgeries on and so we decided to use him too. Dwight first uh, came to us. He came because of pain in his back and leg and the initial examination uh, revealed no neurological deficit, but he had the signs of a disc herniation. And we elected to treat that non-operatively initially. Started a non-operative program. I started doing rehab in Orlando. One day of rehab. He did a test to see where my strength levels were. And he said that Everything on my left side just felt like it just kept losing strength the more tests he did. Most herniated discs improve with just tincture of time. You expect people's pain to improve, their function to improve. Uh, overall, they just feel better, and Dwight just wasn't feeling better. We cautioned him at the time of that initial visit. The thing to check for was any weakness in his calf or any increased symptoms. He started limping. That's when I knew it was serious. So I was like, yo, I thought your back hurt. I'm limping around the house. Everybody's like, man, you limping pretty heavy, man. Like, what's, we ain't never seen you limp like this. His nerves come through the spinal canal here. And specifically, the S1 nerve passes right here, though, that goes to your calf muscle. Here's a spine model. Here are the nerves coming out. Here are the discs. And his disc herniation was right in here, large herniation. It was a really big piece, pushing right on his S1 nerve, which goes right down into your calf. And this large herniation here is hitting that nerve and causing the sciatic pain down his leg and causing his calf to be weak. Doc said, uh, Dwight, if you can't do a calf raise, you need to have surgery. So, go home, I go to sleep. I didn't want to think about it. I'm like, man, this is this ain't right. I, I knew I couldn't do a calf raise. So Kev calls back, he says, Dwight, try to do a calf raise. I said, Kev, I can't do no calf raise. He said, oh man, Debo. Don't tell me that. I said, Kev, I'm trying. I'm not working. They called back uh, four days later and said um, he had um, weakness in his calf, and just the way we told him to check it, his symptoms had increased, and uh, told him to get on the plane. We were waiting for him here in Los Angeles. He said, Dwight, you need to come here as soon as possible to have this surgery. So I'm like, man, I just don't want to do this surgery. Call another doctor, he's supposed to be one of the best in the world. He says, Dwight, who told you you need to have surgery? I said, Dr. Watkins. He said, well, if he said it, that means you need to have surgery. You need to get on that plane right now. Dwight Howard is undergoing surgery in California today to repair a herniated disc. The Magic Center will miss the rest of the season and the playoffs. Channel 9's Christian Brewy joins us now. And Christian, you talked to the Magic's team doctor. Yeah, that's right. Prior to this back issue, Dwight had only missed two games due to injuries in his eight seasons with the Magic. But team doctor Craig Mincer said that after a week and a half of rehab, surgery became the only option. I couldn't really sleep on the plan. I just kept thinking about surgery and what if this happened, what if that happened. I was a little bit nervous, uh, but I didn't show it. I wanted everybody to be like, oh, he ready, he ready. But I was like, ah, surgeries can sometimes be bad, you know. The pain that I had before the surgery was, basically my leg was dead by then. By the time I got to LA, uh, my leg was, was done. I got here, the doctor said, Dwight, he looked like a reverend. I call him, you know, Reverend Watkins. And uh, he's like, Dwight, I talked to your mom and your dad. Everything is going to be just fine. This is what we're going to do. We're going to sedate you. Uh, we're going to put you on the table. 
just gonna open up, you know, your body about that much, and we're gonna pull out a fragment. And I'm like, okay, it sounds good, let's go. Dwight was an excellent patient. He's got a remarkable personality in that he's resilient, he faces facts as the way they are, and he understood exactly what we were telling him from the very beginning. This is the spinal canal. This is Dwight's herniation. It's uh, blocking the whole spinal canal. Here's the spinal canal, there's a blocked spinal canal due to this lighter gray structure here, which is the disc. It's a massive herniation. So the surgery we do, we basically just go right in here in the back, make a keyhole, small hole in the bone and in the ligament through a microscope. It's about a two centimeter incision and we remove the broken off piece of disc. So they put me in this wheelchair. They take me to get an x-ray and uh, I was in pain that day. And he gave me some kind of cocktail, that's what they call it. He said, do I want to give you this cocktail? And they gave me the little cocktail. I started looking around. I'm like, where am I? Next thing I know, I woke up and the surgery was over with. I was drunk the last time I saw you guys. Y'all gave me that good cocktail. Dwight was uh, just the darling of the hospital, and uh, from the first time he walked down the hall and and uh, yelled, "I'm alive!" <laughs> These are the guys that were there when I had my surgery. They gave me, me the too. cocktail. <laughs> they gave me the cocktail that put me out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then I did some research and I found out that the cocktail they gave me was the same cocktail oh. they give guys for lethal injection. <laughs> so, if you're watching this, you're yeah. going to surgery, tell them not to give you the lethal injection cocktail. Okay? Thank you. These are the guys. Here we go. <laughs> You've been here how long? Too long. Too long? Months. Months. Too long. We've been here. <laughs> we supposed to came here for a week, and we've been here. We didn't move in. Uh, this little gym we've been working out at, just for upper body days. We're just starting our little warm up. My name is Brian Meyer. I've been uh, Dwight's performance coach for the past six years. I'm super happy where we're at right now. That condensed NBA season uh, it was really hard on all the athletes. So you can see the injuries that happened. There's no exact timetable 
on when he's going to be back. You want it too slow, and you can drop it quicker, but you move your hip, you slow it down. And it's not like a, a bicep tear or an ACL. Your back is super, super complex. Don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. stay up. Hey, so you get any phone call last night? Yeah. Talked to uh, Kobe Bryant from the Lakers. And I, you got an impersonation of him? Yeah, he said, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations, Dwight. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to the team, you know? Yeah. You know? uh, you know, got a chance to do something great, man. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you, you know? And, uh, you know? You know but it's just it's welcome, man. It's welcome, man. It's, hey, 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 I know, I know. No, yeah. All the stress and everything going on, you know what I'm saying? But it's over with now, you know. You, you can breathe. It's, you know, it's time to go to work, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> blessed to be able to step on the court again, you know, uh, and it means a lot to me. Sitting down in the hotel for four months, it's very tough on somebody like myself, you know, but, uh, you know, God has blessed me, and uh, I really appreciate things more now than I did before the surgery. You know, I'm happy to be in front of you guys. I'm happy to be here in, in L.A. I've been in L.A. for four months and it's like it's been home for me you know it's been great you know it started off walking around Beverly Hills and uh, every day you know I had you know this one lady who would always come hey come to the Lakers come to the Lakers <laughs> and uh, if she's watching I'm here <laughs> said I was going to have to have surgery. I was uh, sitting in a room with uh, Kevin and uh, my trainer, Brian. I just was, I was just out of it. You know, everybody was sitting in the front waiting on me to come out. They said, oh man, something ain't right. And I said, yeah, I'm done. And they was like, what you mean you done? I said, I'm done. I got to have surgery. I'm done. Dr. Watkins said, if you don't have your surgery in 48 hours, you're done. You know, I went home and I was just in shock. I didn't know what to do. I just really tried to get my mind off of it, you know, try to play video games or do something not to think about it. But, you know, at that point it was just so tough. And then I came up here and had the surgery. Uh, got in my bed uh, that night and, you know, I was, I was pretty sad. I said, I got super sad a couple of days later when I was at the hotel. And I started watching, you know, some of the games on TV. And I was in bed, like, crying. But I didn't want nobody else to know that, so I waited till everybody was asleep. And, you know, I just cried and just like, why? Why this had to happen after, you know, all this stuff that was going on? All these fans thinking this and that. 
And then I had to have surgery. You know, what about my teammates? It was pretty tough to deal with. You know, I didn't, at, at that time, I didn't see any positives coming out of it. I just didn't want people thinking that it was, it was fake. I would say it was kind of like a blessing in the storm. You know, I went through a lot of stuff this year. It, it kind of helped me with the future. I had prayed, prayed all summer, and you know, God said, Dwight, I want you to do something. I want you to move. This is why I want you to move. And you know, I went back and forth like, man, I, I just, I love Orlando. I love this, I love that. And he said, Dwight, I want you to do something. And I really didn't listen. You know, I didn't listen. Basically, I had to get a butt whooping from God, you know, and it hurt, it hurt, but I think it was great, you know, for me to go through what I went through. Um, I got scrutinized in a way that I've never been scrutinized before. You know, I saw, you know, friends and teammates and, you know, whoever just, Basically, I felt like they turned their back on me. And, you know, uh, it took me a while to get over it. And uh, at that moment, I was like, well, you know, God, when well, you're in control, you know, uh, at that point, you know, I was just so hurt, you know, that I wanted to just stop and give up, you know, but I'm like, that's not me. That's not who I am. And uh, he said, well, you know, Dwight, you still had that chance. I'm still giving you that opportunity. We got no no Skittles today, no soda, uh, chicken breast, uh, spinach, uh, and then we got a little bit of vegetables, which uh, we go with we go with some corn. Sometimes we eat some broccoli, you know, and then we got water. Take a trip to the gym. On the road again. <laughs> Seeing Shrek on the road again. Uh, we actually headed to UCLA. We got lower body, um, some movement training, and uh, we've been working out at UCLA probably the past, I don't know, maybe three weeks, three and a half weeks. So that's where, that's where we're off to. It's hard for me because I wanted to get the team to go hard, but right now I'm still recovering, still rehabbing. So until that day where I can go in the gym for three hours, like I normally do, be doing this right now, 40 jump shots, do my leg workout. We're going to have a great workout, you know, but I can't wait to really get it in. But right now we're taking a step by step, going up the ladder, trying to be straight in this I just remember the whole year I'm telling everybody to listen to their heart and uh, I started reading a book and the first, as soon as I opened the book, it said the heart is the most, the most deceitful thing in you, you know, who can trust it, who can trust the heart and I thought about why. And your heart is filled with emotions, it's filled with, you know, basically love for something don't really see the truth. All you see is the emotional side and the love. And, and you know, God had to show me, like, hey, your heart was in the way. You know, I told you to do something. And your heart was in the way of what I asked you to do. Take your heart out of it and trust me. And I was like, well, cool. Let's get this show on the road. <laughs> UCLA right now, you know, working on rehab and training. Brian Meyer here, you know, getting our man DH right. You know, 
know, he's, he's very gifted, obviously, he's a, he's a great athlete, but there's certain things that, uh, that compensate that maybe we didn't want to compensate. And so I think the, the injury is almost like a blessing in disguise because we're able to build it from the ground up again. Dwight's feelings about the scrutiny that, that he received this year is, is, I think he feels like he deserved some of it. Uh, and he feels like certain things he did this year he didn't do uh, correctly or, or the best way to have them done. And, and he knows that and he feels like, you know, just like anybody else, those are lessons for him that, you know, he'll take stuff from and, and learn and move on. And then some of it, you know, of course, he feels like, hey, it's just, you know, where I want to play basketball at. You know, it, it says nothing about who I am as a person or what I've done in the community or how I love my kids or, you know, how hard I play on the court. It's, it's just a basketball team, you know, and teams trade players every day. So what's wrong with a player wanting to go somewhere else? muscles that we're doing in our, our activation and our warm-up, are they able to hold? And if those continue to hold, um, then we can, we can keep progressing. started out doing his, his activation, his core, all the stretch kind of stuff that we talked about. And we do his movement and his power stuff. Um, a little bit more control-ish. Um, yeah, we're focused on the power, but more focused on control. And then we're coming in here doing range of motion strength. And then we'll go back and do about a half hour, 35 minutes of shooting or free throws. That, hold that. Eight, seven, six, back's fine. Yeah. Five, four, Three, two, good. Don't let me win. Push your knees up towards the sky. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. Relax. Flip back over on your butt. You ready? Don't let me win. Use your toes. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Stay up. Stay up. Stay up. Stay up. Don't let me win. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, right five, here. four, yeah. three, yeah. two, good. Take that. Pause. Yeah. 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 Since LeBron James and the whole decision thing has kind of made free agency and, and star athletes uh, get put under a microscope. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, ten regular. With everything that's going on right now, I, I definitely don't think people really understand who he is. I think they did for a while and and he is that really nice, really, you know, fun, you know, guy that gives back, you know, that's won a community assist award for doing the most in his community five years out of seven seasons. You know, a, a lot of people have forgotten that. I think they knew it, but they got kind of lost in everything that's taking place this year. They say that he was a great person. They say he was fun with people, with the kids. So when I started working with him, and then I see for myself. Would it be okay to take a picture with all of you guys with us? We're the Youth Lady Cheer Squad. We just kind of were excited that you're on campus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're having practice. Yeah, he's been pretty good at holding me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're trying to get those right Howard shoulders. Yeah, we played it because, you know, I'm trying to get back in shape. Well, I'm glad you're in LA. Really yeah, me too. We're very excited. excited. Y'all ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. You, you ready? I mean, he's, he just has a great uh, personality and a great humorous look at himself and life. And, but the most important thing I think in dealing with Dwight that made, that made our surgery successful is his uh, tenacity and hard work in the rehabilitation program after the surgery. He did everything we asked him. 
We sent him to a top rehabilitation uh, specialist, Michael Schlenk, here in Los Angeles. He stayed in town, he did the rehab here, he did every single thing that Michael and, uh, and Rob and I asked of him, and uh, he worked hard in the rehab. That strength wouldn't have come back without him working hard in the rehab. Just got finished doing my workout for the day. Uh, today we came in, we did some uh, agility, uh, strength, speed stuff. Actually, this is like the third week that I've been able to do any kind of movement on the court. You know, so everything is going up. Uh, I had surgery April 20th, and uh, it's, that's where I am today. I'm just working on myself, working on my body. Uh, trying to get back in shape, trying to get back right so I can get ready for the season. You know, right now the scar tissue and everything is trying to realign, you know, and get back right. You know, so I'm going to have pain, you know, but I saw the x-rays, everything is a-okay. Um, I can't wait to get back right, you know, but it's just a lot of work. Uh, but I'm willing to go through the fire, you know, so at the end of the year, I can be holding up that trophy. We can have that parade, baby. problems and tweaking things is how we really learn about this thing. Because you can go to anybody and say this is tight, that's tight, but what happens in reality? Well, in reality, throughout this whole thing, a real major thing has been hip flexors, long quad. Always. I mean, that's, and then it's associated with, you know, this anterior satchel plane instability. And uh, as soon as we clear that, I mean, that was one of the big moves. As soon as you got that stretched out, remember I used to be really stiff going backwards? Mm -hmm. You can get there. So we just have to make sure we're on top of it and you'll be okay. Okay, come on over here, Pop. Take a look. The Left knee to chest. Bring a guy, bring it up real high, real high, real high, real high, real high, real high, real high higher. My name is Michael Schlenk, and uh, I'm a physical therapist. I've been a physical therapist for 35 years. I was trained at Stanford University. I work uh, in West Los Angeles uh, on Santa Monica Boulevard, and I've been in this particular suite for 27 okay, and a half this years. To go away. I want the slurdotti curve to go away. See, you can do more. Doc, you can um, do a little more. You can do a little more. That's what I want. Dwight started physical therapy uh, about a week after uh, surgery, which is unusual. Usually it's three to four weeks because you're waiting for certain things to heal. The reason we do this is because we want to work them in short and range. It, it wakes it up. But there were certain things that we had to keep an eye on with Dwight. One is to try to regain the strength of his calf, and we could certainly work on that aggressively without disturbing the, the surgical site. Looks good, man. It's all good. And just to make sure that he didn't get rambunctious and try to do things he wasn't supposed to do. Can you backwards, please? Better, worse, same, dead, different. Oh, it's better. Yeah. I felt it all the way back. But That's the whole idea. When you're stiff, it's always because it's weak. The main collaboration That's was through Brian, because I'm the setup guy. I got things ready so Dwight could do much higher level stuff. And I had watched uh, Brian take him through many levels of his routine. And I would always check him afterwards to see if these muscle imbalances were starting to reemerge. When you work at that level, you know, if you're off just a little bit, things start to break down. It's all a matter of balance and making sure everything works together. When he takes longer strides, and he's above, you know, that 50, 40, 50 percent. So all his movement stuff's been been great, but it's, you know, the shuffle stops, quick feet stuff, the big, long, you know, strides where he just feels a little bit of that heaviness. I could probably push a little bit through it, but I, I haven't been pushing that issue too much. It's okay. What we'll do today is that, you know, we, you know there was a couple things we fixed. I'll do star taping on him because that always helps with that sense of cessation. That might make a difference. We'll do the kinesio tape uh, strategy on that. Christine? Yeah. It's my favorite kind of treatment. It's safe and it's very effective. Every day has, has gotten better. We have some days where it might be a little heavy, heaviness or a little soreness, but the, the pain the, um, with the sciatic nerve and the atrophy and uh, discomfort. It's not there at all. Uh, it'll stay on for three to five days. The, this tape's pr pretty good. It's pretty, pretty it'll last tight. a long time. And yeah, it'll take care of stuff as long as it's on. I mean, look, the proof is in the pudding. We know it, it works for Dwight. That's it. 
That's it. That's it. Roy was an outstanding patient. He worked very hard. Uh, he followed through with everything I asked him to do. I, I mean, he really was one of the hardest working uh, patients I, I've had ever, uh, particularly in an athlete. Very positive, optimistic outlook on things. Uh, not afraid to ever laugh with himself and the people around him. I think in many ways, um, he's got such a jovial nature and he's always having fun and making jokes and, and is such a great upbeat uh, spirit that I think a lot of people misinterpret that, that he's not taking this seriously and he's not taking his profession or his rehab seriously and everything else. But there's no doubt he does, and, and he has. And that's why he worked so hard after the surgery to get back. And he wouldn't have the core strength and the agility and the flexibility to return without a lot of hard work. And uh, he put in the time and effort. His return uh, has been a product of, uh, of his determination and hard work. No doubt the jumping, the pounding, the loading, the twisting, the bodies banging up against him, all that requires a lot of strength of his core muscles to protect that disc. And that's why the rehabilitation part after the surgery is a vital part. My dad's always said 50% of it is the surgery and 50% is the rehab. The athletes are such a pleasure to work with because they work so hard, especially somebody like Dwight. He's had such a good attitude and he's worked so hard to get back there. He, I don't think people entirely appreciate that He's back on the court. He's playing already, and the surgery was, you know, less than six months ago. Defended, by Howard, out to Gasol, picked up by Marion, inside Grant, watching Howard. And to be able to get over things that quickly is really pretty remarkable, and it's a testament to how hard he's worked.